a metallic conductor is moved through a magnetic field and an ammeter is connected to form a circuit. When you move a metal conductor through a magnetic field so that it cuts through the magnetic field lines, you will induce an EMF. And if there's a circuit present, then that will induce a current flow. So we're asking which direction will the induced current flow in this example, and why will it flow in that direction? There's two ways to look at this flashcard. There's a, a more complicated view, and there's an easier view. We'll look at the complicated view first, and I'll show you then the easy way of working this out. First thing that we must write down to start off with, though, is that the direction, the direction of induced EMF and current, if there's a circuit, will always oppose the change causing it. Now this is a really useful little statement which you need to remember. The direction of the induced EMF and therefore of the current will always oppose the change causing it. So here we've got a change of moving this conductor through the magnetic field. We're moving it upwards in this case. And so what we're saying here is that the direction of the EMF that's induced in this wire is going to try and stop that from happening. It's going to try and exert a force backwards to try and stop the motion through the magnetic field. Let me show you in a little bit more detail of what's actually going on here. So to start with, here's a North Pole and here's a South Pole. And so magnetic field lines are going from left to right, always from north to south. And in this magnetic field, we have a conductor. I'm going to do it head on. So we're looking straight down the conductor. We've said that if this conductor is being moved upwards, then the EMF that's induced in this conductor and the current will flow in such a direction as to try and stop that from happening. Now remember that when you have a current flowing in a wire, you create a circular magnetic field around it. So let's just line up the magnetic field. So we've got north to south, like that. And so if we're going to have a magnetic field around this conductor, which is going to try and stop its motion from going up, what we really need is a, a circular magnetic field, which has a direction like that. Because when the magnetic fields are in the same direction, like here and here, they will repel. And that means that this wire will be forced downwards. You can also think of these, these magnetic field lines as repelling off each other like this. And so there's a catapult effect and there'll be a force downwards on the, on the wire. Okay, so the next question is, well, what direction does the current have to flow to get a magnetic field in that direction, that clockwise direction? And if you remember back a couple of flashcards, we had the right hand grip rule. I know there are lots of rules in this uh, topic. The right hand grip rule, which says that if you have a current flowing upwards, then if you put that as your thumb, and the way that your fingers curl will tell you the direction of the magnetic field associated with that current. And so here, if we think about the right hand grip rule, we can ha we'll have to put our thumb into the page. And so our current will be going away from us. That's why I've done a little cross there. And that will create that, 
that clockwise magnetic field, which will repel the external magnetic field, which will create the force going downwards, which will oppose the change that caused it. <gasps> Phew! Blimey, that's a bit of a lot to remember, isn't it? So let me show you the easy way of doing this. It's all right, you can stop sweating now. All you have to remember is the word generator. Generator. So you have to pretend that you're Australian, or maybe you are. Uh, excuse my dreadful Australian accent. Generator, because we are generating an EMF, or generating a current inducing an EMF. So by remembering this phrase, generator, uh, we can use our right hand, hence the generator, to understand which way the induced EMF and current will flow. So we take our right hand, and very similar to Fleming's left hand rule, but with the right hand, we have first finger field. So that's our feel, that's what we look for first of all. And in this case, that's right, that's going from north to south. The second finger is going to be our current, that's our induced current direction. And the thumb is motion. So the M in thumb stands for motion, first finger field, triple F, and current second finger. So the right hand generator rule helps us to work out the direction of the induced EMF and current. So let's take a look. We've got the motion which is up. Okay, that's up. Our field is going from left to right. So that means our current must be coming out of the page that is our induced current and therefore the EMF is also driving that current that way. So that's the generator rule and it's a good one to remember. It saves all of the, the hassle with the catapult effect and the right hand grip rule. Don't need to worry about that, just remember generator and you'll only need to use that when you are inducing an EMF or a current. Now one final point is that the faster that you move this wire through the magnetic field, the faster you will be cutting through the lines of magnetic flux, the lines of magnetic field of the external magnet. And so that means you will induce a greater EMF and therefore a greater current. So just a side note down here, the faster the wire or conductor cuts through the magnetic field, the greater the induced EMF and current, if there is a circuit. Okay, so there's the generator rule, good one to remember for inducing EMFs and currents.